Hey guys, it's Greg here from Fat Talk, Fire Apparatus Technician Talk. Uh, this is my first ever YouTube video. If you're joining me from the Facebook group Fat Talk, thanks for following me over. If this is your first time here and you're a fire apparatus technician or you're in the fire apparatus industry, head on over to Facebook, check out Fat Talk. It is a group with over a thousand members, all targeted in the area of fire, appar fire apparatus manufacturing and repair. And we've now extended it out into the YouTube world where I'm going to try to be an actor which I know really I'm not, but I'm going to give it my best shot. I figured I'd start off my first YouTube video by doing exactly what I wanted the group to do, and that's helping. Uh, I took one of your questions and made a video out of it, and this is going to be our first uh, attempt at YouTube, and I hope you get something out of it, and be sure to leave a comment on how I did. Thanks, everyone. Hey guys, and welcome to The Garage. Happy Friday to you. We like to answer your questions here as best we can, and today's question was a good one. Uh, we know that we have a very wide audience. Some people are fire apparatus technicians, new and old, and some are both firefighters that work for volunteer fire departments that have to serve as both the mechanic and the firefighter and the pump operator. So the question was, if you have a mechanical valve system like we do here on this pumper, when you actually pull on this lever, what exactly are you moving on the inside and is it something that's accessible in the case of an emergency? So when you when you open this valve, you know you're working this valve. Uh, when you pull on this lever, sorry, you're working this valve, you can watch your gauge. But what are we actually doing on the inside of the pump as we exercise this rod? And that's what we're going to show you there right now. Okay guys, here we are at the valve that we were operating with the handle. We're actually at the heim joint here. This is the rod that's connected to the handle which I was operating a second ago. Here is our heim joint, which is basically just a ball stud, and it fits into this knuckle, and this gives the rod full range of movement here. So it allows you to move forward and back, and the rod can tip as needed for any clearance issues. This is usually what will fail. So when you're doing your inspections, it's important to check these for any play, and just make sure they're in general good shape. You should have free range of movement like this, check for rust to make sure they're lubricated. I also like to see a double nut here, and that just helps lock the heim joint to keep this bolt from backing off. The other thing you want to look for too is a lot of times when you have an unsolicited leak, meaning when you have a valve command to close by the handle over there, and you're still getting water passing through the valve, sometimes you immediately go to the valve must be faulty. Well, it's also important to check your adjustment of the valve. Right now our valve is completely closed and we are dead set against this stop right here. Here's our valve, and here's the stop. So as you push that handle closed, it's going up against the stop. We know that it's adjusted where it needs to be. There can be times if you change a valve or change this heim joint, where this could slightly change everything. And when your valve is completely closed by the handle, you'll notice here it's not exactly on your stop. So it's possible that your valve isn't closing all the way. There's an adjustment right here. It's just a jam nut and the end of this rod is threaded, you would loosen your jam nut, twist your rod until you see this close onto its stop. And of course then, if you still have a bypass condition then where water is bypassing the valve when you have the handle all the way closed and your stop is seated here, you probably do have an internal problem with the valve through wear or a bad seal kit or something like that. Uh, another thing to know too, you also have a stop for fully open and that's right here. So again, you want to make sure when you're, you're pulling your uh, handle out all the way that you're going to hit the fully open because that's going to make sure that it's a, a straight pass through for water then through the ball valve. Fully closed, seated, fully open, seated. Okay, so now I have the camera positioned in the pump house and I'm over at the pump panel. We're actually looking at the valve that's attached to the handle that I was pulling there a second ago. And it's basically just the linkage that connects the handle in which you pull and adjust to the physical valve. And by pulling on that handle, you're operating the valve, opening and closing the ball valve. By doing so, you're adjusting the flow depending on how far you pull the, the handle out. And just to give you an example, here's what happens. Right now, the valve is fully closed and we'll slowly start to pull on the handle and you'll see the valve open. And now we're going to close the valve again. The linkage is connected via a heim joint. 
which allows just like a movable knuckle, which allows the joint to pivot and the valve to be worked open and close. And in a mechanical valve set up like this, that, that is really all there is to it. The more you pull on the handle, the more you open the valve, the more you push on the handle, the more you close the valve. Guys, I hope this video helped you out a little bit. If you have a question that you would like answered, you can head over to fattalk.ca and uh, there's a form there where you can submit your question and I will do my be very best to answer that for you. If you like the channel, uh, what do all the people say? Subscribe and ring the bell down in the corner. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, everybody.